Okay, the next step, at this point, I've accepted the GitHub Classroom invitation and I have my copy of the MP0 starter code. Um, well, it's really the MP starter code. This is code that we're giving to you as the basis for the work that you're gonna do for the next few months. The next thing you need to do is actually load that into Android Studio. Um, and so what I'm gonna do, uh, well, let's see. First, uh, okay, that's fine, yeah. So uh, let me open up Android Studio here. Uh, I'll do that down here um, while this loads up. Um, one classic mistake, I'm just going to point this out, be very careful about this, that people make is they go over here to uh, GitHub and they, they click download. No, 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 don't do that. Uh, you don't want to download. You want to uh, clone the repository from GitHub. Now, you can do this in one of several ways. You're probably going to want to use this HTTPS link. So you're going to copy this, uh, this little copy button here, then we're going to come back over to Android Studio, and we're going to say get from version control. Okay, I'm going to hit paste. Um, it's going to ask me the folder on my computer that I want to put it in. If you have not done this before, you may need to log in through Android Studio so that it can use your GitHub credentials. I've got my GitHub set up already, uh, so I'm going to hit clone. Um, and this is going to start working, and it's copying the code from GitHub onto my local machine and then opening the project so that I can get to work. Now, it may look like stuff is set up and ready to go, but it's not. The first time you load up a project in Android Studio, you got to sit here and kind of wait. You can see down here at the bottom, there's some stuff going on. There's this Gradle build taking place and stuff like that. And not everything is going to work until some of these steps are complete. You'll see that this is broken up here right now. And so just cool your jets. Just, you know, go get a cup of coffee, you know, take a walk around the block, go pet an animal if you've got one nearby, you know, call your mom, whatever it is you need to do to kill five minutes or so. Um, hope it doesn't take that long for me right now because that's gonna get, sort of get awkward, but um, you just gotta wait. Um, don't panic, don't start poking around with stuff. Just take a deep breath, let you know Android Studio get itself squared away. Um, and now, now you'll see up here, some of the stuff is starting to look okay. Those angry red things are going away. Um, and it's starting to load the code that we have into Android Studio so that we can work on it. Now, most of the time, I'm gonna come up here over to the left. Most of the time when we navigate code together in these screencasts, we're gonna be in what's called the project view. So I'm gonna go into that right now. The project view shows you the files in this directory roughly as they're organized on your computer. And so you can see there's a whole bunch of files here. Some of these we're gonna use as we work on the MP together. Some of them we're gonna ignore entirely. There's files in here that you will never really have to understand what they do um, or how they work. But, okay, so we have the MP. Um, let's do a few things together. The first thing is, let's run the test suite. So this is a big part of how you're gonna proceed on the MPs, is that we're gonna give you tests, and your goal is to get the test to pass by modifying your code. The tests represent our expectations about how each part of the project will work. So let's run the test suite and see what happens. Um, it's gonna sit here, it's gonna think for a minute. Again, particularly the first time you run this, it's not necessarily always the fastest process. Give it a minute, it may take a sec. Um, so you'll see that there's um, you know, some activity going on. Uh, Android Studio is not always that great about this. There's this task running in the bottom, but it's not really showing me exactly what's going on. Okay, so now some other things are happening and what it's doing is it's actually running the test. Um, and this will take a minute. Um, um, but what's going to happen is that the test is going to fail. Um, and we'll talk about how to handle this next time uh, in our next uh, screencast or our next walkthrough. But uh, rest assured that when you get the MP, what we give you gets zero points. Now it is very, very, very close to receiving full credit. So there's not a lot of work you have to do and we'll go through one of those tasks together slowly in the next walkthrough. Um, the other, uh, so there are some different tasks that you can run as you work on the MP. I wanna introduce a few of them to you. Um, one of them is you can run this check style tool that we give you. Um, so let's see what happens when we do this. Okay, so it's thinking for a minute. You can see down here it's running check style. 
And now it's actually telling me, and particularly if I go up here and click, uh, scroll up a little bit, it's actually telling me some places where there are check style errors. This is one of the things that's preventing me from getting any points right now is that I need to fix these mistakes. And so I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to do that, but this is a great starting point. The other task that we give you is a format task. This is really useful. This takes a tool, a computer program, and it reformats all of your code to meet a particular coding convention. So that allows you to write things maybe a little bit more sloppy way if you want to, and then you can hit this format task and it'll just go through and, and make everything really nice and, and, and pretty and uh, regularly formatted, which is great. Um, okay, what else? Um, we have the grade task. You may be interested in this. So let's run this together. Um, and what you're gonna see initially is that it's gonna complain that there is a problem. There's an invalid number of contributors in this file. The reason for this is uh, indicated if we go back to the MP document and we look at what we need to do. So in order to identify ourselves to our grading system, here's how this works. You're logged into the website with your Illinois address. You will see a unique ID right here on the website. Now, this is not your unique ID. This is my unique ID. And in fact, this unique ID is bogus. So it even wouldn't even work for me if I was actually submitting my code. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut and paste this and I'll show you how to fix this problem. We're gonna go over to id.text. In order to see this, you have to be in the project view and I'm gonna paste this in. Boom. Now let's try running the grade task. And you only have to do this once. Once you've identified yourself during this checkpoint, you never have to modify this file again. Okay, so I'm gonna hit grade. Now you'll see that it's gonna get past this step because I've uh, put in what I need to in id.txt. Now it knows who I am, and it's gonna run, it's gonna do some thinking. Um, and when it's done, it's gonna print a score. Uh, and right now, that score is gonna be a big fat zero because um, there are uh, several components to the score and I'm not receiving points for either of them. Once the score is generated, I'll show you um, what it looks like. So we have to wait a minute. It's running those test suites again. Those test suites take a, a few seconds to run, so that's fine. Um, you'll see that they failed again. And now you'll see printed down here, there's this grade summary. And there's two components to the grade for MP0. In the future, there'll be more because we'll run more tests and each test will be worth a certain number of points. But right now, um, there's only two tests. The first one is testing that the title of your activity is correct. And we'll talk about what that means next and how to fix it. That's failing, and so you're getting zero points for that. And then the other one is check style, because there are some check style problems, as we pointed out before. So you're not getting points for that either. If you install our CS125 plugin, you could run the grade task at any point by simply hitting the CS125 icon in your menu bar. And this is gonna do the same thing that we just did, right? It's gonna run all these things again, and we're gonna print the same result because we haven't changed any of the code, and so we're still failing the test that we need to pass. Okay. Um, one thing I want to point out, really want to emphasize this, and so I'll come back to this a few times. The grade task is not a good way to work on your code. It's not a good way to develop. In order to develop, you want to be running the test suites. Those will always provide more information. So you'll see here that, you know, it's not necessarily clear exactly what went wrong, right? It's just saying the test failed. And then, you know, it's, it's a little unclear. So usually you want to run this test task. And we'll show you how to set those up in the future as we release new test suites for the other parts of the MP. Um, this is how you want to do your development. You want to run the tests. Um, if they fail, figure out what went wrong. Go back to your code. Adjust things. Make the changes that you need to make. And then go back to the test suites and run them again. When you feel confident that, you know, you're on the right track, that's the point at which you run the grader and see if your score has gone up, right? But the grader just runs the test suites internally. So the test suites are, you know, essentially the same thing that the grader is doing, except they provide more information about what went wrong or what went right. Okay, so um, now we have the uh, code imported into Android Studio. We've identified ourselves and we've started to familiarize ourselves with some of the various tasks and other things that can go on. Now, there's a variety of different things that can go wrong at this point, um, particularly if your internet connection isn't particularly good or whatever, right? 
Um, and there's a few sort of common tricks that you can use to try to uh, fix this. So the first one is if we go over here to the file menu, you can try uh, sync project with Gradle files. This will essentially reload some information from some of the files that are in the project and try to kind of bring everything back together again. Sometimes this helps address certain problems. A more drastic step, although it works fine, is, and I'm not going to do it because it's slow, is to click on invalidate caches restart. So if you click invalidate and restart, what will happen is that Android Studio will restart and then it'll reload the project again. And when it does, remember that slow step after we first loaded the project from GitHub? You're going to have to wait for that again. So get prepared to go out for another cup of coffee. But this can be another thing to try if something's not going right and you can't figure out why. These are sort of some of our common debugging steps. I wish we have, didn't have to do this stuff. It makes me a little silly. It's like, you know, unplug it and plug it back in again. It's sort of the equivalent for Android Studio. But just like unplug it and plug it back in again, sometimes it does, in fact, work. Okay, so we've identified ourselves with our ID.txt file. Um, and we are good to go. Our next task is going to be getting some points on this MP.